Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Hansen. Alongside me, I have Kyle Harrigan for the final round, final nine of the 2020 Colorado State Disc Golf Championship presented by Dismania. Um, we're at our final nine holes at the Savage Apparel Course in Fort Morgan, Colorado, um, where we're shaping up for quite the battle, eh, Kyle? Yeah, I mean, we've got a real close card coming into this final nine right now. I want to give one more shout out to the Mile High Disc Golf Club for helping make this event possible without their support and, quite frankly, the 36 plus sponsors we had for this event. It wouldn't be possible. We've got Joe Revere, five down on the round, 25 down overall. And we've got our other three competitors, Aaron, Tyler, and yourself, Nick, all at four down on the round at 20, 18, and 15. This is gonna be an exciting final nine to finish because it is a scorable final nine. Yeah, I think Aaron's really gonna be pushing Joe here at the end. And I'm excited to see where we go. So hole 10 here, uh, par three, uh, 360 feet. It's a gettable two for the pros. You're gonna have two lines here, a right side and a left side uh, choice, which makes it nice. Um, the hyzer for the backhand, right hand player though, is gonna be pretty tight, whereas it has a more open forehand. But at the end of that forehand line, it's gonna be a tighter um, green approach there. So absolutely, I think we're I think gonna get a couple of both here. Absolutely, it looks like Tyler's lining up that sidearm shot. It's gonna be a little easier off the tee. And looks like he was just a little inside on it, but that's okay. That should be able to get up and down for Aaron going the hyzer route, a little more Flip accessible to the pin. Tree, but um, he's going to be probably pretty close, I would say, up there. Joe with the thumber and then the crouch. Let's see where that drops. Oh. He's up there up near the pin. He's going to have a, a, some guarded area there, and you're going that same hyzer route. Just a little low, Nick. Yeah, hit the gap, but yeah, didn't get the height on it. It's all right, though. You should be able to get up and down from there with a nice sidearm. You're looking at about a 20-foot putt, maybe a little longer. Yeah, get, get your par there and get out of there. Yeah, Tyler. This is a tough hole. Yeah. Um, as you can see, a bunch of us are kind of just like, you know, halfway to three-quarters of the way down the fairway. Yeah. Pitching up to get our three. And you just want to avoid those trees right by the green, so your approach shot is pretty important. Oh, Joe, great run for the two, trying to get one on the entire card. Oh, he's so close all the time. Yeah, great putt there, Nick. Just solidify that par and be able to walk away and on to the next one. Yep, on the whole 11 for me. <clears throat> We're all going to be tapping out for pars here. Yeah. So, like I said, not an easy hole. One you can, two, um, but there's just a lot of trouble throughout the entire hole, whether it's the beginning or the end of it. Um, so really good, really good hold design, I would say. Yeah, it's, it's nice to walk away with that three, and looks like we missed Aaron's tap out, but here we are on hole 11. Uh, par three, 456 feet. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be going down the center of the fairway here. However, it's pretty tight fairway any way you look at it. Um, a lot of um, available routes without the OB line that's usually between these two holes. Um, so... They definitely have given, given us a blessing there, and we'll see how the players attack it here. Um, with that ability, you know, gives us the chance to go for a two. Um, but for the most part, this is just another three that you know you want to get. Yeah, it's going to take a unconventional shot to access the pin. I, really, these guys are looking at it from a three and just trying to walk away with as minimal damage to the score as possible. We've got Tyler lining up that flex line. And you're gonna come back today. It looks like he got definitely more right than he did the first day. And he's asking everybody, Aaron is just wasting no time. Gripping and ripping. Yeah, and that one looks like a great shot. Aaron has just got so much raw power. It's so fun to watch him throw the disc and I throw pretty far. Yeah, I I, I I'm just shocked and in awe by him the whole time I watch him play. Joe's up there. And looks like you caught an early tree and you found yourself just off that left side. That's a rough spot to be. And trying to access the back route, caught that tree fading in there. Last one there. If we caught that, it's going to funnel towards the basket and have a good look to my three, but we're going to have a tough look there for a par. Yeah. Oh, Tyler left himself a little short even, it looks like. Yeah. Aaron hyzered way out, but as you can see, even though hyzering out, you still have quite the open approach. He looks like he was pin high even. That's insane. 
Joe's not very happy with that birdie look that he had that he didn't give a bid to, but great putt by Tyler. Looks like about circle's edge. Yeah, it gets the instant replay. Well worth it. Look at that full extension on the hand. Hands out. It's up to the shoulder. No doubt he was making that putt. Yeah, that was in all the way. He's probably almost at 40 feet. He's putting, you know. Yeah. Standstill putt. That's a good one. Let's see. We must have missed your. Uh... Yeah, your we, par attempt. We missed my out there. Just I just threw mine under the basket. I didn't even really have a putt there. Yeah. So, so take another four on this today. Unfortunately, okay. this this one uh, hole had my number uh, both rounds this weekend. We'll remove some trees next year. It'll be better for you. Perfect. Thank yep. you, Kyle. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll go mark them for you. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you can see, not very happy, but bogey's not bad. We'll take it. We'll move on. Yeah, and and as we can see, the conditions are condensed considerably more windy than they were for the front nine. As we try to just get through the rest of this and round, it's gonna pick up so quick, yeah. like it was like a snap of the fingers difference. Yeah. And we're moving from the wooded holes. We're getting to the more open holes of the course. We've got hole twelve here, one of the easier par fours out there. Uh, we're uh, we're looking at kind of that landing zone. You want to hyzer in off the tee. Give yourself just a nice clean approach to the basket and try to walk away with that birdie. Yeah, it's a pretty routine um, birdie, I would say, for the backhand, you know, right-handed player where it's just hyzer, flat putter shot. <clears throat> Tyler's going to throw a great shot here, it looks like. He's going to fade back left with that wind, and that's going to push him significantly, you know, further left than he wanted to. Yeah, he's going to have to control that hyzer a little more. Joe is looking like he's about the ideal landing zone. If he, he just need a little skip from the looks of it. Aaron going with a ridiculous sidearm route, possibly with that wind. And we going for the two. Yeah, we saw Rob go for that the first round, but Aaron just nailed that. He's way up there. Way up there. And you are in a good spot. Should be a nice little putter throw here. Oh yeah. Yeah, right to the basket. Oh, Perfect. Yeah, a little doink next to the basket. It was yep. a little deep, but, you know, Mother Nature helped. Yeah. Oh, Joe turns his putter a little bit. He's looking at a long comeback for the birdie. You know, the way Joe has been playing, though, I would probably say it's safe to say that. Ooh, wow. Tyler hit the basket there? Off the basket. Wow. Oh, you can see it on his face. That's yep. just pure joy. Nobody's ever that close. Aaron had a and little throwing a sidearm? Yep. Even crazier. Joe just played it smart, laid it up. Yeah, he's just laying up on that one. Yeah, you've got five strokes. There's no reason to play with it. Just no keep it to a one loss. No reason to be aggressive on that one. Yeah. Take your birdie, or take your par, I mean, and get out of here. Yep. You don't need the birdie. It's not going to hurt you. You, of course, corrected pretty well from day one. Yeah. Got your birdie this time around. Yeah. Uh, a lot, lot different than the first round. Looks good. Joe walks away with his par. This look of frustration on his face, though, even knowing he gave away a stroke with five to spare. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't like giving up any strokes. Nope. Um, he he knows that any hole, you know, anything can happen, so each stroke does matter. Absolutely. On to hole 13 here. Um, uh, easy par three, you could say. Uh, 263 feet. Uh, the hyzer route that he's showing here is available. I think the sidearm route, though, is the much more... Uh, use route, um, whether you're throwing the sidearm or the big anhyzer uh, for the right hand player. Uh, but the green is a little covered with this tree, as you can see, um, and it can make it easy to get to. Absolutely. And we got Tyler starting off with that sidearm route, playing it wide, letting the wind do work on it. Ooh, kind of rolled back on him, so he's going to have a little longer than he wants with this weather. Aaron. Aaron's getting back across as well, but as we talked about, folks, you can see just the leaves already. Just They're starting to rip. Yeah, it is much stronger. That looks like it carried into the area there, so that should be a, a much simpler putt than everybody else so far. Joe going with the sidearm today. Yeah, that looks good, though. Hey, a rare sidearm from Joe. Tyler's not that bad. And a great, solid stroke. Committed putt again. We've seen a couple of those from him now. He's he's ready to play. Yeah, he's definitely committing to these last shots down the stretch here. You know, 
where it really matters the most. Yeah, he's putting himself in the mix, too, with Aaron, uh, trying to push that second place and, and maybe even give Joe just a little run for his money, keep Joe honest for the rest of the round. And Yeah, make sure he keeps, you know, keeps him on his toes. But as you can see, Joe throwing a sidearm to right there is phenomenal. We're, we If Joe's throwing a sidearm that close, we're in trouble. Yep, yep. And Aaron tapping out for his two as well. Looks like we got ourselves a star frame on the 13th hole. So that's a nice. That's a great, uh, great way to make the long trek as you think about it. Headed over here to full hole 14. Yeah, second, uh, second star frame around there. Yeah. But hole 14, par four, 865 feet. Uh, we're gonna be playing straight into a headwind. I'm pretty sure, or a right to left headwind here on this hole. It's going to be extremely difficult this time around. This is a hole that you almost always expect wind off of. Um, it's one of the most open areas on the entire course. You don't have any trees blocking you. And uh, they've got some work to do to get up there to try to push that birdie. And you can see the wind ripping off the sign there. And Tyler going with that. And Heiser, that just. Wow. You can just see it move. Yeah, and he got a good roll out of it. Looks like he might be pinned up on that tree, but we'll see. Aaron, it's got to be a headwind from the looks yeah, of these throws. These dumping over. Yeah. You can just see the flags all the way along the left yep. side just going. They're just roaring. And, oh, yours is a little high. Yeah, I did not throw a good shot there. Oh. And we're going to be probably straight out of bounds up it, there somewhere. Yeah. Joe just playing. I mean, Joe's to every shot pretty much turned over on this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Joe hit the tree. The three of them go straight over, and I go straight left out of bounds. Yeah. Joe just trying to play an out. That's a tough place to be behind that tree, especially Look with at his shirt. Oh my gosh. We weren't kidding when we said the wind was going to pick up today, folks. Yeah, it is. Just picked his disc up and sends it left. Wow. And yeah, there you are. Oh, wow. I mean, it's just grabbing everything and turning it over. Yeah. I you mean, got a good tree kick, though, because that was headed towards the out-of-bounds. Straight. It was, yeah. So we're happy with that one. Still working. Aaron working around that electrical pole. He's up there. That's going to be a long putt, but it's up there. Yeah, Joe's going to throw a decent shot, but, you know, he's still going to be 150 short from there. Yep. He's seeing what everybody else is doing in front of him, and you guys can see the chase card was just finishing out the hole as these gentlemen were approaching the fairway. So, you know, it's he's able to see the competition. We've got PDJ live scoring rolling. So he's probably got a pretty good idea of where he stands amongst the group right now. That's the one thing I really hope doesn't disappear after this COVID thing. That's the one thing since COVID that I've just been like, why haven't we been doing this the whole time? PDJ live scoring is awesome. And, you know, rumor has it there's going to be some U-Disc tie-in next year, and we're going to be able to see even better things happening with okay. it. So. Okay. Yeah. Tyler, in that. Tyler from the fence line, that was a good attempt at it, but, you know, he'll be just walking away with a, looks like a tap-in double bogey right now. Yeah, you know, we've made a lot of these holes look easy, but we're just kind of clanking along down this one. Yeah, yeah. Joe with the bogey putt there, taking his five. Uh, we've got... Nick walking away with his double bogey. Aaron looking to make the putt and possibly be the only par. Little Ooh. high, but he got it. He's the, he took the box with a par on hole 14. That's uh, not common for sure. Oh. <clears throat> and that's going to get him to within three strokes of Joe with four holes to go. Yep. So... Probably the most pressure pressure Joe's felt since round two, really. Yeah, he's def he's definitely putting the pressure on here at the end. Yeah. So hole fifteen here, par three, four hundred and ninety feet. Uh, with that wind we had on the last hole, it's gonna be the opposite for this one. So it should be a left to right tail, giving you know you the opportunity to really you know try and get aggressive on this one and get down to the basket per se. Yeah, we've only got the OB trouble on the left-hand side, as we saw it lines the fairway of hole 14. We've also got some right-hand side OB. It's going to kind of come right up in front of these pines. They're going to be on the right-hand side and uh, just behind the tee pad on the next hole. So a lot of room to really give it a run, especially with that tailwind there. And Aaron stepping up. He's ripping one. Oh, oh just caught the branch hit those trees that definitely had a chance i would say uh, joe going more conservative with a yeah with a thumber. he's obviously just going 
placement shot with that thumber. Yep. Oh, we got a tracker shot. Ooh. Oh, Wind is playing games one. with that disc, though. Yeah. <laughs> that thing was all over the place. Sure was. And great rip, Nick. That's up in the fairway. Yeah, that one's going to be dead center for yeah. us. Maybe a little left. That's probably more meat than Aaron wants trying to push Joe, but that's okay. It looks like he should be able to get up and down. Yeah, this one's really a tough one to gain strokes on yep. unless you're inside the circle. Oh, wind slapped you down there. Just straight down. Tyler got way up there throwing that wow. fairway. He throws so far. He sure does, and that wind just did not allow much of a run there. And that's all right. It happens. You're going to have those in the wind. Yeah. There we go. Joe, solid putt to just keep slamming it in there. Yeah. Aaron's up next. He's just uh, just thinking about the strokes he can't. Oh, can't pick up on Joe there. Yeah. There's a man that can close out a round. That is Joe Revere for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he is definitely a closer. Yeah. There you go. You got your bogey. Able to move on. Not happy with it, but with this wind, yep. managing my shots right now is what I'm doing. Absolutely. Three holes left to play. Hole 16 here, par 4, um, 615 feet. You're going to play down the center here, usually about to the tee pad on the left-hand side to get an approach shot into the basket. <clears throat> Um, not really a hole you see people go for, I would say, off the tee box. Potentially reachable at 615. It is a little downhill. Um, but for the most part, we're going to see people off to that left-hand side throwing that approach. Yeah, once you get off the tee, as long as you get off clean, you're going to have your option for a, a backhand or a sidearm approach on the hole. But you're really just looking to walk away with that three. Just nice, clean drive off the box there. And we've got Aaron showing us the way one more time. Oh boy, and he's, he's going for that. He is getting very aggressive. He knows holes are starting to run short, and oh he my. skipped off the sidewalk. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Wow. If he would have just hit the grass, he'd be looking at it too. If he was, yeah, on the other side of that grass there, he's probably 35 feet. Yep. And maybe even skip closer. Yeah. Joe throws his thumber to the perfect landing area. That's going to be unobstructed. Just whatever shot he feels like doing right now, yeah. he can go for it. He's really setting himself up well right now. Uh, Tyler, though. What a smash. Wow. It's going to be a tricky putt with those trees there, but he still has a look, and you're going at it, too, it looks I like. I also decided to go for it. You know what? The sidewalk's in bounds, though, so that's a nice thing. You don't have to worry about that being a Kenobi River at all. And you got yourself in an awkward position, and that wind just carried you. Yep, carried me all the way along the backside there. Yeah. Joe, knowing what he has to do, just a simple... Oh! Just a simple throw-in from... Yeah, let's just throw it in from the middle of the fairway. Yeah, this like, nice 200-foot little hyzer skip. Oh, crashing the chains. Oh, it <laughs> bounces in just perfectly. <laughs> even, no, no reaction yeah, from him either. I, he doesn't even believe it happened. <laughs> He's got to go up and see it. Nice job, Joe. Great eagle. Wow, what a, what a shot. And we've seen two eagles so far this weekend, and both of those are from Joe. Yeah, he's, yep. he's a beast. He knows what he's doing there. And we got Aaron. Looks like he's not getting too aggressive on the putt here. Just kind of laying up. You know, laying up for his birdie. He's in such a good spot that you don't want to get rid of that stroke. Absolutely. I'm putting here from circle's edge for the three. It's going to fall out, and I'm going to tap in my par. Yeah, no shame in that. We got Aaron. Solid stroke for his uh, his birdie putt there, knowing that he didn't gather one on Joe, but he still gathered one on the field. So Yeah, that's ridiculous. He's so far up there thinking he's possibly going to get one. Yeah, Tyler gets his birdie as well. Joe so. steals one from the middle of the fairway from him. <laughs> uh, Joe's face still gets me. He knows he stole one. That wasn't anything he planned on doing by any means. <laughs> no, he's like, thanks for catching that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so on to hole 17 here. Uh, par three, 453 feet. 
Uh, like we talked about the other day, we've got this new area on the left-hand side that you just saw, those solar panels in the way where it's really the best landing spot for people. Absolutely, and with the wind right now, it's tough to say what these guys are gonna do going at it. We're looking at a little bit of a head slash right to left on it, and Joe is playing the super conservative route, and luckily he caught wow. that tree. Yeah, he was way short. Aaron mm. going for No, he's also laying up, but he's a little more aggressive with his layup. Yeah, that's a good place to be. Tyler. Ooh. Oh, he got safe. Wow. I, I, Tyler and this hole have some history, so I'm glad to see him safe here. Yeah. And are you trying to duplicate the magic? I am. I... <sighs> I'm not going to, though. Oh, that wind just slapped you down. I love the line. Uh, I played it smart, though. I, you know, got it over the the grass on the left-hand side, you know, right away. Yep. I made sure someone was there to watch. Good call. Um, just because I knew it was going to turn over with that head one. Yeah. Looks like Tyler had a rough up. Aaron, uh, that's going to be a tough putt for a comeback there. Yeah. Looks like we might have missed a couple shots there. Ooh. Yeah. Joe and my upshot. Joe's going to, you know, put his right there for the uh, drop in par three. Yep. Drop and in three. I'm going to be putting out for my four here after the OB stroke. Yeah. Let's see. Looks like we may have missed one of Tyler's two because Tyler also is taking a four on the hole and he was safe on the drive. So Yeah, he laid up from. I think he hit, or no, he hit early. So Yeah, he hit a tree and just must have threw it up from there. And yeah. Aaron also taking his bogey on the hole. But with one hole left, we're just moments away from crowning our 2020 Colorado State Disc Golf Championships champion. Yeah, and I would say we're probably in a lock with this hole here. Yeah. Not a lot of, you know, we're not going to have four, four stroke swing here. Uh, I think Joe's got it in a bag. Is that going to be six now for him? That would be a six-time state champion if Joe is able to hold on to those four strokes on this one last hole with minimal danger on it. OB only on the left-hand side. It shares kind of a fairway line with hole 17. And, uh, you know, you want to talk about Mr. Consistency. Oh, Joe's got five strokes. It's not even four. Oh, yeah, he's... Oh! Oh! Well, That's a speaking too early, maybe may, Kyle. Maybe that that uh, that tree never really came into my mind before, but uh, and once again, you just see how hard and far he throws. He threw that over everything on that right hand side. Yeah, he is way up there. Yeah, as we watch these guys throw, I have to call out one gentleman. Hole eighteen is sponsored by the Happy Birthday Jay Burkhart Committee. So happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday, Jay Burkhart. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Look at all this action on the disc, but it's still doing what you need it to do. Dancing. Yeah, that looks up there. I mean, Aaron blocked it, but it's up there. <laughs> uh, it doesn't look like I was sure either what yep. that one was, but, you know, exactly like you said, I'm out there. Yep, that's all that matters. And Tyler's on the, the dirt mound. That smart play. I don't know if he's going for that, but either way, it's a good bid with the wind. With the wind. Uh, Aaron, just off the top, look at you. <laughs> All the way up there. All the way. And way to finish the tournament with the birdie, man. Yep. You know, you know we had a couple of putting, you know, issues coming down the stretch there, but that's a good one to finish on. I'm, I'm happy to see that from you. And Joe, just making sure that was in the basket. Great putt by Joe. Aaron, phenomenal showing this weekend. Definitely showing Colorado. He is a force to be reckoned with in the future. And Tyler Liebman, Mr. Consistency. He's always a guy you expect to see on that lead card and, and finishing strong, and he sure did this weekend. Yes, he did. Okay. Uh, I think it was a good showing from all of our competitors. Um, we're going to see the crowning of our 2020 champ, Joe Revere, yeah. for what we said was his sixth win. That the is, state championship, to which the is best of our knowledge, six state championships. Joe is unfortunately not able to be at last year's state championships, but we are happy to have him out here in Fort Morgan this year. You know, 27 down, a commanding five stroke victory. That is a good weekend. And here's the leaderboard uh, we're going to have Nate Metzler and Joel Freeman jumping up there. 
um, passing me with a five down and a seven down on a Nate Metzler. That's a great round in the wind, uh, tying Joe's round there. And that's gonna round out our top 10 there. Uh, we want to thank everybody that, you know, helped out with this event. We want to thank, you know, the production crew here. We want to thank all the volunteers, all of the, you know, the sponsors. And, you know, I really want to thank you, Kyle. You know, you do a lot for this community here. Well, thank you, Nick. I appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you all next year. All right. Thanks again, folks, for watching, and have a good one.